to another CUBE conversation where we go in depth with the thought leaders in the industry that are making significant changes to how we conduct digital business and the likelihood of success with digital business transformations. I'm Peter Burris. Every organization today has some experience with the power of analytics, but they're also learning that the value of their analytic systems are in part constrained and determined by their access to core information. Some of the most important information that any business can start to utilize within their new advanced analytic systems, quite frankly, is that operational business information that the business has been using to run the business on for years. Now, we've looked at that as silos, and maybe it is, although partly that's in response to the need to have good policy, good governance, and good certainty and predictably in how the system behaves and how secure it's going to be. So the question is, how do we marry the new world of advanced analytics with the older, but nonetheless extremely valuable world of operational processing to create new types of value within digital business today? It's a great topic and we've got a great conversation. Tendu Yaguchu is the CTO of SyncSort. Tendu, welcome back to theCUBE. Hi Peter, it's great to be back in the Cube. Excellent. So look, let's start with the uh, let's start with a with a quick update on SyncSort. How are you doing? What's going on? Oh, it's been really an exciting time at SyncSort. Uh, we have seen a tremendous growth in the last three years. We quadrupled our revenue and also number of employees through both organic innovation and growth as well as through acquisitions. So we now have 7,000 plus customers in over 100 countries and we still have the 84 of Fortune 100 serving large enterprises. It's been a really great journey. Well, so let's get into uh, the specific distinction that you guys have. Uh, at Wikibon the Cube, we've observed, or we predicted that 1919, 2019 rather, 2019 was going to be the year that the enterprise asserted itself in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, we had seen a lot of developers drive cloud forward. We've seen a lot of analytics drive cloud forward. But now as enterprises are entering into cloud in a big way, they're generating or bringing with them new types of challenges and issues that have to be addressed. So when you think about uh, where we are in the journey to more advanced analytics, better operational certainty, greater use of information, what do you think the chief challenges that customers face today are? Uh, of course, as you mentioned that everybody, every organization is trying to take advantage of the data. Data is the core and, uh, and uh, take advantage of the digital transformation to enable them for taking uh, getting more value out of their data. And in doing so, they are uh, moving into cloud, into hybrid cloud architectures. Uh, we have seen early implementations uh, starting with the data lake. Everybody started uh, creating the centralized data hub, uh, enabling uh, advanced analytics, uh, and uh, creating a data marketplace for their internal or external clients. And uh, the early data lakes were utilizing Hadoop on on-premise architectures. Now we are also seeing uh, data lakes uh, sometimes expanding over uh, hybrid or uh, cloud architectures. The challenges uh, that uh, these organizations also started realizing is uh, around once I create this data marketplace, the access to the data, critical customer data, critical product data, uh, order data, order data, is uh, a bigger challenge than I thought that it will be in the pilot project, because these critical data sets and core data sets, uh, often in financial services, banking, and insurance and healthcare, are in uh, environments, uh, data platforms that these companies have invested over multiple decades, and I'm not referring to that as legacy because. Definition of legacy changes. Uh, it, it, these uh, environments, platforms have been holding uh, these cr critical data assets for decades successfully. So we, we call them high value traditional high value applications traditional because they're great. traditional. We know what they do, and there's a certain operational certainty, and we've built up, you know, the, the organization around them Correct. to take care of those assets. 
but they still are very, very high value. Exactly, and uh, making those applications and data available for uh, next generation, next wave uh, platforms is becoming a challenge for a couple of different uh, reasons. One, uh, accessing this data, and uh, accessing this data, uh, making sure the policies and the security and the privacy around these data stores are preserved when the data is uh, available for advanced analytics, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise uh, deployments. So before we go to the second one, I want to make sure I understand that, because it seems very, very important, yes. that what you're saying is if I may, the data is not just the ones and the zeros in the file. The data really start needs to start being thought of as the policies, the governance, the security, and all the other attributes and elements. The metadata, if you will, has to be preserved as the data is getting used. Absolutely, and the, there are challenges around that because now you have to have uh, uh, skill sets to understand the data in those different types of stores, relational data warehouses, mainframe, IBMI, uh, SQL, Oracle, many different uh, data owners and different teams in the organization. And uh, then you have to make sense of it and preserve the policies around each of these data assets while bringing it to the new analytics environments. Right. And uh, make sure that everybody is aligned with the access, the privacy, and the policies, and the governance around that data. And also mapping the metadata to the target systems, right? That's a big challenge because somebody who understands uh, these uh, data sets in a, a mainframe environment is not necessarily understanding the cloud data stores or the new data formats, uh, so how do you kind of bridge that gap and map into the target And vice versa, because, right? Yes, so, like, likewise, yes. So, so, and, and sync, so sync, this is where, this is where sync sort starts getting really interesting because as you noted, a lot of the folks in the mainframe world uh, may not have the familiarity of how the cloud works and a lot of the folks, at least from a data standpoint, yes. and a lot of folks in the cloud that have been doing things with object stores and whatnot, may not, in Hadoop, may not have the knowledge of how the mainframe works. And Correct. so the, those two sides are seeing silos, but the reality is both sides have set up policies and governance models and security regimes and everything else because it works for the workloads that are that are in place on each side. Absolutely. So SyncSort's an interesting company because you guys have experience of crossing that divide. Absolutely, and we see uh, both the next wave and existing data platforms as a moving, uh, evolving uh, target, because these challenges have existed 20 years ago, 10 sure. years ago, it's just the platforms were different, the volume, the variety, complexity was different. However, Hadoop, five, 10 years ago, was the next wave, now it's the cloud, the blockchain will be the next platform that we have to still kind of adapt and make sure that we are advancing our data and creating value out of data. So that's uh, accessing and preserving those policies is one challenge. And then the second challenge is that as you are making these data sets available for analytics or machine learning, data science applications, deduplicating, standardizing, cleansing, making sure that you can deliver trusted data becomes a big challenge because if you train the models with the bad data, if you create the models with the bad data, you have bad model and then bad data inside. So machine learning and artificial intelligence depends on the uh, data and the quality of the data. So it's not just bringing all enterprise data for analytics, it's also making sure that the data is delivered in a trusted way. That's a big challenge. Yeah, let me, let me build on that if I may, Tantu, because uh, a lot of these tools involve black box belief in what the tool is performing. Correct. So you really don't have a lot of visibility in the inner workings of how the algorithm is doing things. It's, you know, uh, it, that's the way it is. So in many respects, your only real visibility into the quality, the outcome of these tools, is visibility into the quality of the data that's going into uh, the, the building of these models. Correct. I got that right? Correct. And. Uh, in machine learning, the effect of bad data is really multiplies because of the training of the model as well as the insights. 
And with blockchain uh, in the future, it will also become very critical because once you load the data into a blockchain platform, it's immutable. So uh, data quality comes at a higher price uh, in some sense. So that's a, a, a another uh, big challenge. Which is to say that if you load bad data into a blockchain, it's bad forever. Yes, that's very true. Uh, so that's uh, obviously another area that seems sort of as we are accessing all of the enterprise data, delivering high quality data, discovering uh, and understanding the data and delivering uh, deduplicated, standardized, enriched data to the uh, machine learning and AI pipeline and analytics pipeline is an area that uh, we are focused uh, with our products. And the third challenge is that as you are doing it, the speed starts mattering because, okay, I created the data lake or the data hub. The next uh, big uh, uh, use case we started seeing is that, oh yeah, but I have 20 terabyte data, only 10% is changing on a nightly basis. So how do I keep my data lake in sync? Not only that I want to uh, keep my data lake in sync, I also would like to feed that uh, change data and keep my downstream applications in sync. I want to feed the change data to the microservices in the cloud. That speed of delivery started really becoming uh, a uh, very critical uh, requirement for the business. Speed and the targeting of the speed delivery. Speed of the targeting, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, I, I think the, the bottom line uh, is you really want to create an architecture that you can be agnostic and also be able to deliver at the speed the business is going to require at different times. Sometimes it's near real time and a batch. Sometimes it's real time and you have to feed the changes as quickly as possible to the consumer applications and the microservices uh, in the cloud. Well, we've got a lot of CIOs who are starting to ask us questions about, uh, especially as they start thinking about Kubernetes and, and, and Istio and other types yes. of platforms that are intended to facilitate the orchestration and ultimately the management of how these container-based yes. applications work. And we're starting to talk more about the idea of data assurance. Mm -hmm. Make sure the data is good, make sure it's been high quality, make sure it's being, ta being taken care of, but also make sure that it's targeted where it needs to be. Because you don't want a situation where you spin up a new cluster, which you could do very quickly with Kubernetes, mm -hmm. but you haven't made the data available to that Kubernetes-based application so they can actually run. And a lot of CIOs and a lot of application development leaders and a lot of business people are now starting to think about that. How do I make sure the data is where it needs to be so that the applications run when they need to run? Uh, that's a great point. And uh, going back to your kind of uh, comment around the uh, cloud and taking advantage of uh, cloud architectures, one of the things we have observed is uh, organizations were uh, looking at cloud in terms of scalability, elasticity, and uh, reducing costs they did lift and shift of applications. And not all applications can be uh, uh, taking advantage of cloud elasticity when you do that. Most of these applications are created uh, for the existing on-premise uh, fixed architectures. So they are not designed to take advantage of that. And we are seeing a shift now, and the shift is around, instead of trying to kind of lift and shift existing applications, one, for new applications, let me try to adopt the technology uh, assets like you mentioned Kubernetes, uh, that I can stay vendor agnostic mm -hmm. for cloud vendors. Uh, but more importantly, uh, let me try to uh, have some um, best practices in the organization. The new applications can be created to take advantage of the elasticity even though they may not be running in the cloud right. yet. So some organizations refer to this as cloud native, cloud first, uh, some uh, uh, different uh, terms. Uh, and, uh, and make the data, because the core asset here is always the data. Make the data available instead of going after the applications. Make the data from these existing on-premise and uh, different uh, platforms available for uh, cloud. We are definitely seeing that uh, shift. Yeah, and make sure that it, and assure that that data is high quality, 
carries the policies, carries the governance, doesn't break the security models, all those other things. That is uh, a, a, a big uh, difference between how uh, actually organizations went into their Hadoop data lake implementations versus the cloud architectures now. Because when initial Hadoop data lake uh, implementations uh, happened, it was dump all the data. And uh, then, oh, I have to deal with the data quality now. No, it was also, oh, those mainframe people just would, they're so difficult to work with. Meanwhile, you're still closing the books on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, you're not losing orders, your customers aren't calling you on the phone angry. Correct. And that, at the end of the day, is what business has to do. You have to be able to extend what you can currently do with a digital business approach. Correct. And if you can replace certain elements of it, okay, but you can't end up with less functionality as you move forward in the cloud. Absolutely. And it's not just mainframe, it's IBM I, it's the Oracle, it's the Teradata, it's the Diteza, it's, it's growing uh, rapidly in terms of the complexity of that uh, data infrastructure. And uh, for cloud, we are seeing now uh, a lot of pilots are happening with the cloud data warehouses and uh, trying to see uh, if uh, um, the cloud data warehouses can accommodate some of these uh, hybrid uh, uh, deployments. And also we are seeing there's more focus, not after the fact, but more focus on data quality from day one. How am I going to ensure that I'm delivering trusted data and populating the cloud data stores or delivering trusted data to microservices in the cloud? There is a greater focus for uh, both governance and uh, quality. So high quality data movement that leads to high quality data delivery in ways that the business can be certain that whatever derivative work is done remains high quality. Absolutely. Tendu Yaguchu, thank you very much for being once again on theCUBE. Uh, it's always great to have you here. Thank you, Peter. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Tendu Yaguchu is the CTO of SingSort, and once again, I want to thank you very much for participating in this cloud, or this, this CUBE conversation, cloud on the mind, this CUBE conversation. Until next time.